a Luis y Lourdes. Bienvenidos a todos. Después de las 10 de la mañana. Hay bastante energía en el puerto. Tenemos tres miembros presentes. Ahorita queda la agresión. Aquí en Pacheco, hacia el
Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to City Hall. Welcome to Council Chambers. Bienvenidos otra vez. Bienvenidos a la Council de Los Angeles City Council. La Council de Los Angeles. Meeting to order. Members of the Council who are mingling with members of the public here today, if I can ask for your assistance, please, por assistencia. favor, in bringing this meeting to order. Junta en orden. This is a meeting of Los Angeles City Council, Council today, today, February 21, 2003. The City Council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, 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 y para esa gente que no puedan asistir al Concilio, a la Junta de la Ciudad pueden ser vistos por, visto por el Canal 35 en cable y también por la página del computador. Son las 10 de las 10, 10 y tenemos 7 miembros presentes ahorita. Estamos 10 para un quórum. Y para conducir business, pero esto como es viernes, como todos saben, tenemos un número de presentaciones especiales y presentaciones para hacerse. Podemos empezar con esas. Para empezar, en el que lo conoce el concejal del 14 de abril, Nick Pacheco. Mientras el Pacheco está viniendo, es eso del Consejo de Puerto Rico de Bomberos que vamos a pedir que el presidente del público, toda la gente que esté en el Concilio de la Ciudad, si pueden, por favor, pueden sentarse en lo mejor su habilidad. Esperamos a mucha gente hoy. Señor Pacheco. Mr. President, colleagues, first of all, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to recognize four great women out of the Northeast, a community of my district. These are all well-respected members of Highland Park. They have shown a dedication to improve the quality of life, not only for themselves, but for their neighbors. We know that they have been working together on many projects, on specific compact graffiti and crime. We know that they are working together to bring the forward a project that we call the Stairwell Project in Highland Park, which will be a recipient of the Community Improvement Award from the Highland Park Heritage Trust. Uh, this Sunday at Masonic Hall in Highland Park at 3 p.m., uh, which is on Avenue 56, uh, they are going to be recognized for that effort. So let me bring up three uh, women who have been doing a great job for our community. Uh, Nancy, Blaine, Nancy Blaine, Barbara Ann Lopez, Barbara Ann Lopez Patty McIntyre, and Rosa, Rosa Rivas. Rosa Come Rivas. on Vengan acá. Nancy Blaine Nancy presently Blaine, works in the district as the community advocate for Adelaide Children and Family Services. She is a graduate of Occidental College, a member of the Northeast Los Angeles Coordinating Council. She's uh, uh, also uh, been uh, working uh, with the Community uh, Development uh, Board uh, and uh, the Community uh, Development uh, Board uh, to bring uh, resources uh, together uh, to strengthen, uh, strengthen uh, the network of computer uh, centers, uh, centers uh, the, the centers uh, development of the North East LA website, and NELANet.org was designed as the first time user-friendly project, worked on the San Pascual Stairwell Project, has worked with local youths on many mural projects, has written a number of grants to assist our youth to improve their artistic options and artistic outlets. So on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, and specifically 14th Council District, Nancy, I would like to present you with the Certificate of Commendation for your dedication and commitment towards bettering our Highland Park community. Congratulations and thank you for carrying Nancy Blaine. Let me bring up Barbara Ann Lopez. Barbara is uh, one of our proud parents in the community, mother of three boys, past president of the PTA, Neighborhood Watch Coordinator, is an educator at St. Ignatius and REH Alternative School, is the Northeast CPAC co-chair for three terms, has been very active uh, recently with the LA Marathon and Students Run LA. She is the CST Code Watch Enforcement 
And for 25 y years, 25 her family has owned familia, and also the business in Highland Park. Operación. And also, Barbara, I want to present you with a certificate of compensation for caring and for your dedication and commitment towards bettering our Highland Park community. Barbara Lopez, thank you. Barbara Lopez, thank you. Patty McIntyre. Patty McIntyre is a member of our so community for 19 years. years. She's been active this through Neighborhood Watch, helped develop the Garbanza Improvement Association, is a member of the Heritage Trust in Highland Park, is a member of the Coordinating Council, has worked on various task forces, including uh, one with the government, one with dealing with housing and the arts community, member of the Chamber of Commerce in Highland Park, also is a uh, strong member of the recently uh, committee formed to save the Southwest Museum, called the Friends of the Southwest Museum, on behalf for the City of Los Angeles and the 14 uh, Council District, District uh, I'd like to present you with the certificate of commendation to Patty McIntyre for her dedication and commitment towards bettering our Highland Park community and ultimately for caring for yourself and your neighbors. Thank you. I also want to bring up Rosa Rivas, Rosa Rivas, who's lived in our community for over 22 years, years. also a member of the CPAP with, with Northeast Division, founder of the Garbanza Improvement Association, Sin has worked actively with the Hathaway, con el Hathaway. <laughs> Hathaway Children and Family uh, Services. Uh, and, and has been uh, active with them since 1983, assisted the Mommy and Me program for the Highland Park Preschool, and has been a foster mother for many foster children throughout her time in Highland Park. I want to present to you, Rosa, Rosa, a certificate of compensation on behalf of the City of Los Angeles and the 14 Council District for your dedication and commitment towards bettering our Highland Park community and for caring for your neighbors and all the families in Highland Park. Rosa Rivas, thank you. Thank you, Council President. I want to thank Council Pacheco for bringing forward these great individuals. I can share with you, as representative of the other half of the Highland Park, Park, that I've had the pleasure of working with them on several occasions, the Hathaway House, 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 women who are in despair, providing shelter. We have worked on the LANI, the TNI, the improvements along the facade treatments, uh, putting together the street fairs, which I know countless hours are being put into that. And these are the unsung heroes, so thank you, Councilman Pacheco, for bringing them forward. It's very rare we get to acknowledge folks who are really under the trenches to make it happen. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I would like to uh, thank Nick and his staff for uh, giving us this award this morning and also for recognizing um, the needs and concerns that we bring to his office for our community. And I think I can speak on behalf of the other three ladies that we all look forward to working with Nick and Councilman Reyes um, in the communities of Gar uh, Garbanza and Highland Park in the future for the betterment of our entire community. Thank you. And I've already reassured Patty McIntyre that I'll be voting for Garcetti's resolution against the war. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. For Presentation. For our next presentation, let me recognize Councilmember Lamont.
Mr. President, members of the Council, on this day, we are honoring seven young people from our community who have achieved excellence in the organization. Troop 20 of Mother of Good Council Troop at the foothills of Griffith Park on Los Feliz in Vermont has had more Eagle Scouts than probably any troop in Los Angeles. With us this morning is Michael Warner. Michael, let's say a Michael, give a little wave right here. Michael, right here. Salud. Okay. Dylan King, Dylan with King. us this morning. Step up here, Dylan. Good job. Lloyd Cuso, Lloyd Cuso, right here. Lloyd, good job, Lloyd. Michael Sullivan. Michael Sullivan. Good job, Michael. Roberto. Roberto. I want to say it correctly. Like, uh, Geraldo. Geraldo. Roberto. Roberto. Good job. Good trabajo. Casmiro Talentino. Casmiro Talentino. Big hand. Good trabajo. And at the same time, giving these young people a big hand, give their parents a big hand, and have their parents rise for your efforts to be involved with parents. Thank you. 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 Thank I called you at all. And Jan Perry is going Jan to join Perry us, too, because she has a special part of this here. I'm going to ask the great esto, councilwoman of the 9th district, district, who has a heart of gold and concerned and compassionate soul, to say a few words. I wanted to come up here and to say a special thank you to Dylan King for his great citizenship and demonstrating his commitment to helping those who have less uh, options, fewer options and are less empowered by volunteers. Volunteering with the Say Yes program, he worked diligently to help homeless children throughout the downtown and Skid Row community. And it's young people like him that make a difference for the rest of the individuals who uh, are in the city saying that they want to do something, but don't always put their uh, actions, their actions don't always match their words. This young man is a living example of practicing what he preaches. And I want to say to Dylan, um, that I have nothing but respect nothing for you, respect the utmost you. respect. You will always have my respect because you went out of your way, out of your comfortable life, and took time out of your life to go and help children who have so few options. Thank you, and you're a wonderful example, I would even dare say, to most of the people in this council chamber. So thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, each of these young people in their projects did a lot of work in addition to what was just mentioned about Dylan and his efforts, but did conservation work in some of our state parks and even in our very own beloved Griffith Park. Uh, there are special projects that help the group trails the environment there and the caring that they've shown will go on to have an impact for years to come. I want to personally thank them, but at the same time, under their suggestion, recognize someone uh, who is very special to their success and leadership. Uh, I think there's a lot of silver lakers in, uh, in the council chambers tonight, so I know all the silver lakers. Uh, all the silver lakers know walking men. You know who walking man is when you see him walking around. This is running man. I want to have Jerry Sullivan come up here, because Jerry runs silver lakers anybody Más else, get up Jerry, right there. Okay. I have a commendation right here, I'd surprise you a little bit. Uh, Jerry Sullivan has uh, been a resident of Silver Lake for over a quarter of a century and is active member of our Mother of Good Council Church on Vermont Avenue. And Jerry Sullivan is active in scouting the past 10 years. As a Cub Scout uh, leader for four years, and six years as an assistant scout master and scout master of Troop 20. And the the troop owes much to Jerry for taking over when the regular scout master had to leave and for a year and a half sabbatical. He stepped in when someone had to, to leave, but he was very helpful in that aspect. He is known as the sweetheart of Troop 20, of always being there to help the troop 
la tropa nunca falla a nadie que los agentes los programas, la disciplina la designación, direcciones las obras que los tropa son una fuerza de atrás de la lenta realmente se ha conocido que cambia a las personas para acomodar emergencias muchas veces este debe ser un ángel para ellos es el primero para llegar hoy y es el último para ellos para asegurar que todo está bien He's a very uh, es wonderful professional life professional that he's had, and he owns an uh, aeronautical engineering consulting business. Uh, but he is truly es the uh, mentor who's helped pull uh, everyone in the right direction to have a great impact. Para tener gran not impact. in these young men's no life today of Group 20, but in the future as they contribute and go on. He's a graduate of Loyola High School, uh, I believe. Say Monica's good. Santa Monica's good. Santa Monica. Naval Academy, U.S. Naval Academy, Naval Academy and he's a, Naval. truly a wonderful Angelino, and on behalf of Troop 20 and these Eagles, we want to present this commendation to you in resolution, John Jerry Sullivan, John Jerry Sullivan who runs the Hillsborough School of Aviation, who is a true Aviation 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 the Hills of Silver Lake, everyone, and before you run Troop 20. Congratulations. We're going to ask Dylan to speak for all the young men here. Uh, good morning, Council. Uh, just on behalf of all the Eagle Scouts, I'd like to thank all the Council members, especially Tom LeBonge, for his generous support of Troop 20 and our Eagle Scouts. And for me personally, uh, Councilwoman Jan Perry, for her generous support of my Eagle Project. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank all of you. I'm going to ask the families to come back to the photo room. Let's give everybody a Troop 20 and these Eagle Scouts a great hand for their contribution. Members of the council members the public have a chief of the floor. For instance, the Lantry Garcetti, Grohl, Hahn, Holden, Labanch, Miskowski, Pacheco, Perry, Reyes, Weiss, Sign, Padilla, 12 members present in the quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Members, we still have one, two, three, four additional council members with additional presentations. Unless there's an objection, what I would like to do is go through the agenda and dispense with consent items and come back to presentations. Seeing no objections, Sin Madam Clerk, first order of business, please. Order Approval of the minutes. Ms. Hahn moves and Ms. 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 Cassis seconds. seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Ms. Hahn moves and Ms. Cassis seconds. Uh, before beginning the regular agenda, Mr. President, uh, there are two items requesting to be continued. Item number one, a request from council members signed to continue that matter to February 26th. Members request to continue item number one. Without objection, Mr. President, and a request to continue item number two from Council Member Hahn for 60 days, and that would be April 25th. Members request to continue item number two, also without objection. On the regular agenda, items seven and eight are confirmations to the LA Convention and Exhibition Center Authority, Mr. Justin Farrar and Ms. Estela Lopez, and those matters were waived through committee. Uh, public hearing has not been held. And I do not have a request from the public to address the council on these items. Uh, members, members, do we have any requests to call these matters special? I have a commission nomination for us. But if there is no members wishing no to be heard, item 7 and 8, Madam Clerk, please call please the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Those, yes. Those are approved. And I want to thank Mr. Ferrar and Ms. Lopez for their service to the city. Forthwith, please. Next item is Mr. President, items which public hearings have been held. Items 3 through 6. Items 3 through 6 have been held. Items 3 through 6 have been held. Items 3 through 6 Members, a motion from the floor would be required to reopen the public hearing. Seeing no such motion, are there any requests to call these matters special? Items 3 through 6, seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please open the roll? 
Se dice la lista, tal vez el voto. Entonces, están aprobados. Los asuntos por la presentación presente, asuntos que la desaprobación se han hecho, asunto de una vez al 13. Tengo tarjetas sometidas en el asunto al 13, voy a llamar a este especial. En el asunto al 12, voy a decir, no tengo petición. Primero del público para hablar con el consejo. Entonces, vamos a ver la audiencia por la abierta y cerrada. En los que quieren llamar a alguna especie, señora Galante, no más que una presentación. 9 al 12, ¿hay algún especial? Que se haga una por favor, ¿se la lista? ¿Se dice la lista? Tabulece el voto. 12, sí. Están aprobados. Próximo asunto, por favor. Por asunto, yo presento la presentación de la agenda, asuntos con la audiencia por la agencia, en el asunto 15 y 16, y luego hay múltiples mociones y reportes en el 15. Vamos a ver el que sea especial. Asuntos que sea el 16, el especial. Mr. Garcetti, puede tener repetición del 16, pero vamos a ver el 16. Y continuamos con el 14, el 14, el 14, el 14, el 14, el 17. El 14, 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 ¿Es correcto? Ok, entonces sin objeción, el asunto 14 14 también. 15 está continuado también. En los asuntos 15 y 16 llamados especiales, asuntos especiales. En los asuntos no hay asunto por la organización, pero no se ha hecho asunto 17, está enfrente de la continuación. En otra opción del público para hablar con el asunto 17, vamos a poner el asunto cerrado. ¿Miembros que desean llamar este asunto especial? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Item 17 is received in the file. Next item, please. That would end the agenda for today. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members of the council were joined this morning by student body officers from the Bird Middle School in Sun Valley, California. They're kind of sprinkled around back there. Would you all like to stand up? Um, these are mostly seventh and eighth, uh, mostly eighth graders and a few seventh graders. And they're joined by their teachers, Mr. Kurt Lowry and Ms. Alba Ramon. And so I just wanted you to join me in welcoming them to City Hall. You're going to see a lively meeting here today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Ms. Galante, for the presentation. The chair of the Planning Council, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm going to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, hope you'll join with me today in recognizing the great work that social workers do in Los Angeles, the state, and in the country that we live in. This is Social Worker Month, and we just welcome this morning Controller Lori Chick, myself, uh, former council member, now Assembly Member Jack Goldberg. Uh, we're up in the beautiful Tom Bradley room to recognize the great work that social workers do. And today we're hosting a conference looking at the, the state of social work here in the city and also in the state as well. And I just want to reiterate some of the work that I shared with all of the folks that are here today. Um, one, first of all, it's great to see social workers that have gone on to great things in City Hall, like Laura Chick herself, uh, an MSW. Um, members of Congress, people like Barbara Lee. But really, when we talk about first responders in our community, we always think about um, the great work that our police and fire departments do, and they truly are first responders. But we also have social first responders. And social, social workers are just those people who try to keep or rebuild the social fabric of our society. We try to make sure that family relationships, neighborhood relationships, to make sure that communities have strong bonds between each other. And social workers who traditionally have done great casework and constituent services as we do have really transformed the whole profession recently. They also take on issues of community organizing, to take on issues of community organizing, to take on issues of community activism as well. 
And so today we are celebrating social work month, um, to celebrate the work of those who deal with the most that need in our society. And we have this resolution today specifically for the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter, which reads, where social workers work empowers those who are frequently unheard, where social workers use their education, professional training, and commitment to improve all communities, and where social workers are dedicated advocates for the rights of others, and social workers shape numerous programs and policies that strengthen individual lives and, sa and society, and where social workers, whether in direct practice, administration, education, and research, or policy development, make an impact in every community, therefore be resolved by the adoption of this resolution. Uh, that we congratulate the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter, signatures here from the entire city council and the mayor and the council president. Um, for all of you, thank you for the work that you do in transforming all of our lives and our communities. Um, and I'm sure we all join in congratulating you as we hear also from Jan Lee Wong, who is the executive director of NS NASW um, here. Uh, and we would welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you. Members, I'm mm -hmm. honored to be mm -hmm. here, and I especially would like mm -hmm. to thank mm -hmm. Council Member Garcetti mm -hmm. for arranging mm -hmm. this. Uh, it's so important in these challenging times that we all also mm -hmm. not forget mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the human mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. of our fellow mm -hmm. citizens. And given the state mm -hmm. budget mm -hmm. crisis mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our concerns mm -hmm. and worries mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. troubles mm -hmm. overseas, it's easy mm -hmm. to forget that we also have people here in this country, in this great city of Los Angeles, who need our help. So I'm proud to be a social worker. I'm really happy to see a large number of our members and social workers here in our city and to honor the work that you do and your work that you do. Thank you. 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 And thank you as well to uh, Christopher Ariano from my staff, who is the field deputy for Echo Park, and also finishing up his MSW. Um, had an unnamed school, since we don't want to start any school rivalry jokes. But congratulations, and here's the certificate for all of us. Thank you, Councilmember Garcetti. For our next presentation, our next presentation Chair is Councilmember Weiss. Councilmember Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Colleagues, we're here to mark a very special occasion in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of a terrific school in my district, the Yeshiva Rabbi Isaacson. And I'm joined here today by the leaders of the school, Rabbi Goldenberg, Rabbi Krauss, and by uh, their good friend and strong advocate, come on, Joe, move closer, Joe Klein from the community. Um, it is a terrific occasion. And this Jewish day school serves pre-nursery to eighth grade students. It was founded in 1953 with just seven students. Today, the school serves over 1,000 students um, and is a, uh, it's just a beacon in the community. People come from all across Los Angeles to attend Yeshiva Rabbi Isaacson and indeed from all across the world, from Israel, from the former Soviet Union, from Iran, from South America. America. It is an extraordinary school, and students have been immersed in a rigorous and vital curriculum for decades. Uh, the fact that they have turned 50 is a true testament to the leadership, to the vision of those who are uh, responsible for the school, and it's really a testament to how strong the support is in the community for this school. This is a community-based school, a community-based education, and people are living and work in the community. They, they attend the school, uh, they have made it such a vibrant vibrant source of light and inspiration and pride for all of us. And so today I want to present to the directors of the Yeshiva Rabbi Isaacson, Rabbi Isaacson, Torah Academy, this 
presentation on behalf of the City Council in recognition of 50 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, let's add, I would I'm now fumbling my words this morning. I'd now like to ask Rabbi Krauss to come say a few words to us, the director of the school. Rabbi. On behalf of our school and our community, I want to thank Councilman Weiss and his staff and the council members for according us this recognition today. It's a very special milestone, this Jubilee year. Not just for our school, but for our entire community. The Jubilee year represents freedom. As a matter of fact, on the Liberty Bell, proclaim freedom throughout the land is a motto that represents this country. And in the immortal words of George Washington in 1790, proclaimed in the Turo Synagogue in Providence, Strong Island, Rhode Island, where he declared that this country would be one that would give bigotry no sanction and persecution, no assistance, assistance. is very meaningful yeah, for our community. It was founded 50 years ago by a handful of Holocaust survivors who came to this community, broken in body and in spirit, working to rebuild their lives in this great country that we have, and especially in this great city that represents the culture, diversity, and tolerance that has made our country a great country in the world. Thank you so much. President, colleagues, I'm here with Patty Giggins, the Executive Director of the Los Angeles County Commission on Assaults Against Women, Robbie Rusty, the organization's volunteer board president, and Jennifer Larkin, and Andrew Larkin, uh, staff members. Uh, we're here to recognize something called V-Day LA and the extraordinary work of Patty and the Commission. Uh, the and Commission on Assaults Against Women has been part of a global movement for social change for the past 31 years, and V-Day has become part of a global movement to end violence against women and girls. It's an extraordinary cultural and socio-political event, and a few moments, Patty's going to tell you a little bit more about it, about the important work that's coming up on Monday, so people are fully aware of that. But it addresses everything from women being safely and able to return to work, to women being sexually abused in Mexico, to women being able to drive in Kuwait, to women being able to look straight ahead and not over their shoulders in Los Angeles. The V-Day movement has reached 35 countries, 599 cities, 515 colleges, and is raising funds and awareness for vital programs to save lives throughout the world. Most recently, playwright and V-Day founder Eve Ensler joined with the LA Commission on Assaults Against Women to feature a private benefit screening of selected scenes from an upcoming documentary about V-Day entitled Until the Violence Stops. I'd like to ask Patty Giggins to address us now and tell us a little bit more about the documentary about V-Day and why it is something that all of us in all the communities we represent here on this council need to get behind, need to recognize and need to empower. Here is Patty Giggins. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council, Council Member Weiss, for declaring, and thank you other Council Members for uh, participating in declaring February 24th as V-Day LA. The V in V-Day means Valentine, 
Valentín. It means victory. victory. And it also means that other word, otros, vagina. Otros, la vagina. Eve Ensler, five years ago, a playwright Hace and storyteller, in, uh, created the vagina monologues, which I'm sure many of you have seen. La vagina, que These han visto estos vagina monologues, monologues and V days have vagina, now taken place all over the world. The violence against women's movement, movement in, in, mujeres, in Los Angeles and in our country is about 30, 35 years old. And we've been toiling in the trenches answering the hotlines, going to the hospitals with victims, trying to make good, help make good policy for women and the safety of women and children. And then Eve Ensor came along and galvanized and gave a real spirit to this movement. So we particularly appreciate, appreciate that our city has declared V-Day LA for Los Angeles. And I'm, I'm inviting every council member to please come as our guests on Monday evening, 7 o'clock, at the Directors Guild of, uh, of America uh, on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. We are going to have a celebration and keep this vision of ending violence against women alive. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you there on Monday night. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's clear you've got a lot of supporters here in this room today. And colleagues, I want to make sure that everybody on the council gets all the information about the event Monday night. Uh, my staff will provide your office with the information, and I hope you and your staff can attend. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. 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 Thank And many people in our Mucha city don't know about this no sabe sobre esto. program that we now este have in place called the 311 que system. Se llama el, el sistema de 311. Greg Dexter, Greg project Dexter, manager for information technology. technology. He successfully es, developed and implemented the 311 system. One the call the city hall system. system. And what the people of our city can now do is dial 311 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and receive a live operator, live operator and explain what they need from the city of Los Angeles, de Los Angeles. and that live operator will then connect them to the appropriate department. We are a city that is providing services, and originally there was a concept of using the 311 system for non-emergency Police calls. It was expanded for expanded all city services. services and Mr. Greg Dexter, the project manager, responsible for pulling this whole program together. So we encourage people to use that system. The implementation made the city of Los Angeles the largest city and the first in Southern California to implement the 311 system. And his job performance, excellent leadership commitment, and strong teamwork is worthy of recognition. And we are recognizing you today, Greg, for your contribution to the people of Los Angeles who can simply dial 311 and get that service from the city of Los Angeles and hopefully surrounding cities in Los Angeles, surrounding cities in California and throughout the country can implement a 311 system. So I want to present this resolution to you on behalf of the council, the mayor, commending you for what you have done to provide better service to the people of Los Angeles. And the microphone is yours. Thank you, Councilman Zion, Mr. President, distinguished council members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is indeed a great honor to be here this morning. Um, 
I have many people to thank. Um, I'd like to thank the current executive leadership of IGA for their great support uh, in finishing the project and especially for a successful launch. I need also to thank the prior executive leadership of IGA who were so instrumental in the decisions early in the project that were so foundational to the project's success. I'd like to thank also the steering committee chaired by the CAO who continued to give us their great support during the project. Of course, the mayor's office gave us continued support as well as the council and especially the IGA's committee. I also want to thank every one of the 40 plus departments in the city who supported us during the development of the citywide service directory, which is a major key to providing the service. And lastly, but certainly not least, I need to thank and have a great debt of, debt of, great, uh, debt of gratitude to a dynamite project team, IGA staff members and individual contractors who dedicated and focused themselves to achieving success. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Councilmember Zayn, for our final presentation this morning. The chair recognizes Councilmember Hahn. Hahn. Colleagues, it is a good day for some, but a bad day for others. And we're here today to um, wish Amir a successful life, uh, even though this will be his last day uh, here at the City of Los Angeles. I'm going to read this because you have your mother here. Whereas Amir Sadati began his career with the City of Los Angeles during September 1990 as a Transportation Engineer Assistant 1 in the Bureau of Transportation Programs and Development, and Amir proved himself to be a valuable asset to the department, and during November 1993 was elevated to Transportation Engineer Assistant 2 in the Bureau of Traffic Management. And during this assignment, Mr. Sadati worked closely with City Council offices, local homeowner associations, and business improvement districts to evaluate and respond to their requests. And less than one year later, Amir was again elevated to the position of Transportation Engineering Associate 2 in the Bureau of Rail Transit and Construction Management, where he served as the project engineer for construction of four major rail subway projects in in Hollywood, Universal City, and North Hollywood. And in March of 1999, Amir was promoted as a transportation engineer and was placed in charge of the regulation division and the city's parking meter program, an assignment which would prove to be very challenging when it was made public that new parking meters were not functioning properly. And under his leadership, the Department of Transportation was able to assure the city council and the public that no unwarranted citations would be forced. And in early 2000, Amir was assigned to serve as the department's liaison to the city council and the mayor's office. In this key position, Amir proved to be a valuable asset in representing his department in the city council meetings, as well as providing support to council and their constituents on numerous requests. And because of his demonstrated professional skills, he was selected by Mayor James Hong to assume the responsibilities of Assistant Deputy Mayor and Policy Analyst. And while in the Mayor's office, Amir kept the Mayor apprised of transportation-related issues associated with the Metropolitan Transportation Transit Authority. He also represented the Mayor's office at MTA Board of Directors Committee and Board Staff Briefs. And Amir worked closely with the mayor's representatives in Sacramento and Washington, D.C., as well as local, state, and federal agencies to help get funding for key projects for the city and the region. And here comes the sad part. And Amir has accepted a position of parking manager with the city of Pasadena. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
that by the adoption of this resolution, the Los Angeles City Council, along with the mayor, the city attorney, the city controller, bank, and command, Amir Sadat is the next person to be elected to the city of Los Angeles by the adoption of this resolution, along with the mayor, the city attorney, the city controller, bank, and command, and we really do wish him much success with his new endeavor. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to add my um, congratulations to Mir, though. However, you know, you left us, and then you left, you went to go to the mayor's office, and now you're leaving us again. Um, that being said, we will welcome you back at any point in time to the city. Uh, you have been an extraordinary help um, when you are liaison here in city council, and I was first elected. Uh, we could go to you, and you would solve those problems for us, and we really appreciated it, and believe that uh, you will go far in life, um, and that the city has trained you uh, to be an effective uh, individual who's going to make a change here in Los Angeles. And so we, we feel you're part of the city family. Glad that Hubbard and the rest of my colleagues and Janice Hahn chose this opportunity to honor you today. I just want to add my words of congratulations. I just wanted to say, um, as a constituent and resident of District 1, I look forward to working with you and your expertise, your insight, and anything we can do to contribute to the city of Los Angeles. Mr. Chairman, I look forward to working with you, and uh, congratulations, and thank you all your hard work. Councilmember Labonge. Thank you, Mr. President and members, President and, uh, and members. members of the audience. What we have here is a great city employee. And uh, he is going just a little bit north to the Crown of the Valley. You know what Crown of the Valley is? That's Pasadena. And that Crown of the Valley is the city of Los Angeles. And that Crown of the Valley is going to be smiling because of your expertise on that. And from our part, and as you spoke of the first district, our part is the central part of the city. Sometimes we do migrate, not to the west side, but we go north, and we go into Pasadena a little to see what they've done on Colorado Road. So we hope we have a lot of fair parking meters that work properly. But you're going to enjoy that. I also think that that city and its parade and all the things that you do for the city of Los Angeles is one of the great events of all of Southern California. The people line the streets to watch the floats of all the cities and the other activities there. Estoy orgulloso de usted, Pedro Torres, porque usted es un empleado de la ciudad que ha tomado toda llamada, que a lo mejor no ha tenido la respuesta, pero ha encontrado que la gente está dispuesta a ayudar. Pedro Torres, 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 Pedro all of a sudden, people are sitting there Marcos and having coffee and chat and great conversation and great life. I'd like to see that again here in every little village in uh, the big city of the Angels. Thank you, America, for what you're doing. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman, for recognizing one of your great constituents of the 50th District, who so uh, nicely escorted by his mother all the way up here from San Pedro. So congratulations to you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for keeping LA moving. We'll depend on you in Pasadena because it affects our traffic flow as well. So that would be fantastic to improve the life of the residents of the city of Los Angeles. We just wanted to wish you good luck. Thanks for all the help over the years. Council Member Holden. Thank you, Mr. President. You have a better job, Tiene un mejor trabajo, better environment, mejor medio ambiente. the people are easier to work with, mejor, mejor and trabajo. you realize that early on, and that's why you're leaving. <laughs> I'm convinced if you thought it was going to be better here, you'd stay. Aquí, but since you know it's, what it's like here, aquí, 
And you can't be the worst no there. Ser, so you leave. Ahí, por eso va. Oh, I'm going to tell him that. Let me get to that. The fact of the matter is that just I've always been nice to you, right? Está bien con él, right? That's right. And I want you to know that my que son, son que mi hijo, who manages the affairs of the city of Pasadena, he's equally nice to you. Igualmente. If you serve the city si well, bien, you'll be rewarded for the good work that you will do. You don't have to scrape and scratch for it no and come here and sit and let you beat you up. I never did that. I was always very nice to the people of Transportation. In fact, I'm very nice to everyone who comes to the dead front table. He's never going to get a squawk out of me or a complaint or a criticism. But you know how these other people are. But I want you to know that it's going to be really nice for you to ask me. You're not the first one to go over there. When someone is heading up the CRA in Pasadena, she worked here with the CRA, DWP, and so on. And now they're over there. So they seem to be good workers are leaving here and going there. Obviously, you must be a good worker and you were well served. It's a good trade. You'll have a good time there. Congratulations. Congratulations. Councilmember Zayn. Councilmember Zayn. Thank you, Mr. President, colleagues. Uh, you have been dedicated, committed, and uh, accessible. We've had problems occur. We needed DOT's assistance. You've always been there and sorted out the issues and corrected the problems. So I want to bid you farewell and a good journey in Pasadena. It's a beautiful city. I know we'll be calling you to get parking passes for the uh, Rose Parade. I'm sure you'll make arrangements for us. There's always a benefit knowing someone in another city, like Councilman Holt and son, over in Pasadena as a councilman. But uh, I know it's a promotion. It's climbing up that ladder of administration. I know you'll do well there, and I just want to ask my personal thanks to the Council of 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 Council I just want to add my words of uh, appreciation, and I think it was interesting as Janice talked about your beginning here as a liaison with the Transportation Department to the City Councils and in particular the homeowner groups. We're talking an awful lot today about neighborhood councils, neighborhood-friendly government. You helped show the way 10 years ago in perhaps the most difficult department that a community can consider friendly, and that you did it well, and that you helped provide the stop signs, the, the kinds of things that neighbors were looking for to make their life better, quality of life and commitment is better, uh, is, is a real commendation to you. And I agree with some of the others here that you've shown a really, really incredibly positive career path, and I do hope that it'll come back here and, and continue advancement uh, back to the City of Los yeah, Angeles and the Department of Service. Transportation. So I don't think you're leaving us for good. Um, no, but the experience is going to be uh, enjoyable and worthwhile for everybody in, in our neighboring city. But I do hope that we'll see you back here one day. I just uh, want to again uh, thank you. And I do want to apologize to my colleague, Councilman Red, who wanted to be up here at the podium and help me present this on my Tuesday. 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 Barged up here. I forgot to ask him if he wanted to do this. But I do want to add my bit of thanks to you. And I'm pleased to know that just because you're changing jobs, you're not changing residences. I mean, we'll remain in San Pedro as one of my constituents in San Pedro. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing this. Thank you very gracias. much. Um, I'm very honored to be here. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Councilman Burnson, who's Council not Burnson actually here today. If you wanted to, uh, they're at a Mobility 21 la meeting. La um, I want to especially thank you, Councilman Hong, for um, um, taking this. Uh, and I promise you, I will be a good citizen of uh, uh, San Pedro, City of Los Angeles. I'll be a voting member and I'll, um, I'll be around. I just want to share a few things with you real fast. I know we have a long day. Um, I truly feel I'm very lucky and blessed. I, uh, I have a great family. Uh, my mom and my sister are here. Uh, my fiance wasn't able to come. She has school. Uh, but 12 years ago, I came to a family uh, in the city of Los Angeles. 
Ángeles y Transportación. El departamento, yo sé que han tenido sus antes y bajos, pero el tráfico y transportación es uno de los que se presentan en clave. Tenemos buenos ingenieros y managers aquí, espero que continúen trabajando con ellos. Como usted mencionó, yo me hice la obligación del Consejo. Es una serie que usted me tomó en su familia también y añadí a esa de la familia que ya tenía. Y que me aprecié y dar las gracias por eso. Hace dos años, cuando mi papá murió, este consejo de estudio tenía su memoria. Yo estaba corriendo a agarrar a Ramos de Funer. Él quedó las gracias al consejo por hacer hecho eso. And uh, then came Mayor Hahn and, uh, and, and his uh, green staff, Tim McCosker, Brian Williams, um, and said, Amir, you know, we've got another challenge for you. Are you up to uh, take this challenge? And, and I want to thank the mayor and, and Brian and, and, and Tim for giving me that opportunity to, to help whatever I could with the ever-challenging MTA. Um, and, And even though I was on loan to the mayor's office, uh, again, the mayor's office and their staff took me in as a, as a part of the family, and, and my family even grew there. So I truly have been lucky and blessed to, to be here, to have worked for this great city, uh, and I will continue to keep all of you in my heart as friends, as family. Family never says goodbye. Family sticks together, and you are my family, and thank you all for um, honoring me today. Um, I will continue to keep all of you in my heart as friends, Look forward to Espero seeing you and working with you real soon. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and my mom and my mom and, and sister are here, and uh, they're going to take some pictures. Thank you. Oh. Yes, just got here. Uh, <laughs> uh, on behalf of Wayne Tung, our general manager, and certainly for myself and all the employees with the Department of Transportation, uh, we regretfully are saying so long to Amir Sadati. We worked with Amir for the last 12 years. He's been involved in a variety of uh, assignments with the Department. But certainly you and the Council know him best for being the Council liaison over the last few years. And I think you know and work with him that he's been an effective communicator with you. He's worked with you on many things. He's worked with you on many things. Thank you, Councilor Brown. This concludes the presentation segment of today's agenda. Mr. Garcetti. Mr. Garcetti. Um, I would move that we take about 15 hours. Excuse me. I would move that we take about an item. Item. 15 out of order. I believe it's 15. Yeah. 15 out of order. Okay. Members, is there a question? Take item 15 out of order. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection. Item 15 is now before us. Uh, as you all know, item 15 is consideration of several de varios, uh, council resolutions resoluciones to, among other things, oppose the battle war in Iraq. La guerra en Iraq. This is a matter that has been considered. considered. Okay, just like we did Tuesday, folks, I'm going to need your help in uh, maintaining decorum and allowing the council to proceed, to proceed expeditiously, expeditiously here. This is a matter that has had a public hearing to the rules of elections and intergovernmental relations committee met for more than two hours on this, this last Tuesday. Uh, the city council in its entirety considered the matter. Uh, we also included a more than one half hour public hearing on Tuesday, so cumulatively, Uh, there's been two and a half hours of public testimony. In addition, several council members wish me to publicly acknowledge the numerous, numerous uh, phone calls, emails, letters, and communications to each and every council office. I've definitely heard from the public on this one. As you all know, consideration of two resolutions took place on Tuesday, neither of which received the majority votes, and neither of which received the majority votes to 
to receive our files. So we have the original two motions, the Garcetti motion and the last motion still before us for consideration. We have also before us for consideration two motions or draft resolutions that were submitted on Tuesday, uh, a Garcetti resolution and a Weiss rule resolution as well. So with that being said, that's the starting point for today's council discussion and debate. Unless there's a motion from the floor to reopen the public hearing, let's proceed to recognize Council Member Weiss to be followed by Council Member Perry, Council Member Garcetti, and Council Member Pacheco. Mr. Weiss. Thank you very much, Mr. President. President colleagues, Mr. President, I'd like to ask if there could be order President in the room so we, we can hear each other today. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, in a few moments, we're going to have a vote, and uh, it's not going to be a unanimous vote. There are going to be people uh, of good faith on both sides of the vote that we're going to take in a few minutes. But one thing I did notice, and I really want to commend my friend Mr. Garcetti on, is in the uh, the final draft of his motion, which he has put before the council, he. Uh, included a final paragraph, which was also the final paragraph in the motion that... Can we have order in the room, please, Mr. President? It's hard to hear. Um, he also included the final paragraph that Ms. Gruel and I had put in our uh, alternative motion. And that is a final paragraph which deals with the important need to fund first responders in Los Angeles. And it is so critical that regardless of the differences we may have over uh, the motion that we'll be voting on that Mr. Garcetti proposed, that we stand united as one council on the need for the federal government to do more to protect the second largest city in America. Because regardless of how we vote on the Garcetti motion, regardless of what the Bush administration decides to do, regardless of whether or not there is a war in the Persian Gulf, there will be more terrorist attacks, and there needs to be so much more done to protect this city. We need to do more as a council. The federal government needs to do more. Mr. Garcetti and I, and I think everybody in this council, are in agreement about the initiatives discussed in that final paragraph of both of our resolutions. I would move with Mr. Garcetti's concurrence to separate out that paragraph so we can have a separate vote on those matters so the council can stand united on those matters that it agrees on. So that's my motion, Madam President. Thank you for, thank you for seconding that motion. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti, for concurring in that. And uh, that would be my motion. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. The chair recognizes Council Member Perry. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. This is a very personal issue that affects each and every one of us in very different ways, but in our spirit of democracy and passion and commitment to involving ourselves in those issues in whatever way we choose is what makes us great. I want to stress today that there should be tolerance for all viewpoints here today. You won't find anybody up here who says that war is a good thing and that we should do it. And I also want to speak specifically to those people who call themselves peace-loving anti-war activists who the other day after the debate lost personal insults, used obscene words, uh, made direct references to taking me out or, in their minds, considered uh, the greatest insult they could lob at me was to call me Condoleezza Rice Jr. Now, I don't agree with Condoleezza Rice. I don't agree with her, I don't agree with her but I would fight for her right to express her opinion, and I would do that in a peaceful way. So, individuals who made those comments, you need to check yourself. At any rate, I want to say to the people who are People who are here today, don't let this be the last time you come here. If you mean what you said, put your money together, raise money, go hire uh, a crew and rent some time at the newly opened James Wood Center in the middle of Skid Row and set up regular feedings to honor the homeless veterans who live in Skid Row and are living on the sidewalk if you want to practice what you preach. You do it here at home. It's right here for you to do. And I want to see you continue to fight for funding to help house homeless veterans, men, women, and families, those people who are disenfranchised because they're mentally ill or on drugs, and victims of past wars, the Gulf War, Vietnam, and the Korean War, and to help 
para ayudarnos a nosotros para el terrorismo. Vamos a tener otra disparo en el Black Subway de Homes. Esa gente vino con todos los días. Ayúdenme, proteja lo que es. Y se me respeta para los veteranos, los ciudadanos que pelearon tan... I am not in support of the war, but you're going to have to forgive me if I can't agree word for word with what someone else said. I have a different viewpoint, and I believe I have a right to express that. Because I want to honor those people, the city employees, my own relatives, my friend here on the front row, a resident of Skid Row and a veteran of the Gulf War, and he is disabled because of it. That is why I didn't vote for it the other day, because I am mindful of the people I touch and to touch me every single day. So, I am not a hypocrite. That is why I drafted an amendment because I want to see that my colleagues will be mindful of what I'm telling you here. And what it does is the following. It reminds my colleagues that I need support from federal legislation that acknowledges that veterans make up 20% of the people who live on Skid Row and that they've served our country bravely and sacrificed themselves and are forgotten upon their return. The ACLU sued us yesterday to prevent us from taking people off the sidewalk. Some of us people do not have the wherewithal or the ability to bring themselves up off the sidewalk into a continuum of care. What are you going to do now? I have asked my colleagues to join me in making a greater effort to obtain funding for these individuals from our federal government and on a local level, a local level, the level at which we were elected to serve through the development of permanent, affordable housing by utilizing Proposition 46 and housing trust fund dollars, money specifically targeted for people who are homeless. Thank you. And I need a second on my motion. Thank you. 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 Mr. Pacheco, thank you very much, Mr. President, and, and thank you, Councilmember Perry, for, for your eloquent words. I was happy to be a seconder on the motion as well with uh, Councilmember Pacheco and Councilmember Holden. And I, I know that we have many, many more that face us here. Um, there's not one call that has gone unanswered. In my office, and I'm sure in your office as well, have done this. Not one pothole that we haven't continued to pay. And we are making sure that there is a connection between what we do both locally and locally. So I appreciate you underlining that here. I urge my colleagues to support this uh, again today. I formally like to move 15D, and I would concur with Mr. Weiss that we um, separate out that one paragraph to vote on those two separately. I'd like to move it as amended by Councilmember Perry. Um, and I think we said our words earlier this week, so we don't need to, to restate them. But certainly, as we look at what we have to do, people like Timothy McGee, who are terrorists in our own midst, uh, somebody who killed 13 people, or suspected of killing 12, 13 people in North Atwater Village, we know that those problems are here, right here, and that's exactly why we need to make sure that money is there. When I go to Washington next week, Mr. Weiss, I'm going to be lobbying for that the Homeland Security money. I'm going to be lobbying for that homeless money that Councilmember Perry said, but we also are going to be and we're going to be counted here. We are representing the people who elected us to represent them, and I urge your support of 15D today. Thank you. Mr. President, colleagues, uh, first of all, I just want to tell everyone in the audience uh, that it's unfortunate that we, the Council was unable to pass this on Tuesday, and I do apologize uh, for missing that meeting, and I really speak to you directly uh, in terms of the audience. Uh, my colleagues know that we are all on time scheduled uh, in advance to miss meetings, but uh, I apologize to you because I think, as you know, uh, I've gone on record against the war uh, about a month ago, uh, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, and I were talking about that on the way in. Man, and so today, today I, I feel very good that we're going to pass this. I feel very good that we're doing it in a fashion where we highlight the entire needs of the city. And I do join with Jan Perry from the standpoint that uh, I represent parts of downtown Los Angeles, and I do believe that our homeless uh, issue is one that is important to us. And I think we have to take into account our differing uh, viewpoints on how to handle the problem. Uh, the ACLU has one viewpoint right now. Uh, Councilmember Perry and myself have a different viewpoint. 
nosotros de veras creemos que estamos por haber cuidado para nuestros indigentes, especialmente el hecho de que muchos son veteranos de nuestras guerras. Yo tengo estado con los veteranos en muchas ocasiones, estamos honorándolos, no solo en los cinco puntos, en Bohais, en términos de hacer un nuevo Uh, which will be part of an honoring uh, of our veterans. Uh, But here at Street, uh, colleagues, we are dedicating a memorial to Eugene Obregón, Eugene Obregón uh, and all the Congressional Medal of Honor winners uh, from the Latino uh, community. La community. Latina. And we know, as many of you, that people of color uh, are primarily the ones in the front line when it comes to war. I know that we have tons of veterans who have done a valiant effort of protecting our freedoms and our liberties. And I know that many of them right now are very supportive of our men and women who are in service protecting this country. But I think today they would join the Army and Navy and Marine Corps and all the other forces that are out there in the field of battle to help us in the fight against the enemy. And today we're asking for peace. And today we're voting for peace. And so I will once again deeply support our friend, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you. 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 Sir, thank you for being here. We appreciate your concern and your expression. We've had multiple opportunities to address the council, so I'm going to ask you to sit at this time. Thank you, guards. Sir, you want to submit anything in writing? We'll take that and add that to the record. Sir, you want to submit anything in writing? We'll take that and add that to the record. We all took an oath of office. We were sworn in. We were sworn in. We were sworn in. We were sworn in. I took an oath of office when I was sworn into the military to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, America against all enemies, enemies, foreign and domestic. And every time I was going into office, I took the same oath, and each one of them were just as sincere as the first. Though I was a teenager, and I was in the military, I was willing, ready, willing, and able to put my life on the line, defend any country, defend us against any enemy. We're trying to take away our rights and our liberties. Nothing has changed. Mr. President, members, it does not prevent us from questioning our government when we think we are heading in the wrong direction. I want to remind you of the Vietnamese War and the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. As you know, early in the 60s, there was a guy named John F. Kennedy. F. Kennedy. And he had a thousand advisors in Vietnam. Before he died, he was in the process, he said his intelligence, withdrawing those advisors from Vietnam. Vietnam. Unfortunately for the world, and for those 50,000 American soldiers who subsequently died in that war, in esa guerra, Mr. Johnson then Sir Johnson, began to entonces, escalate the war in Vietnam. 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 He increased the advisors and the rest is history. The soldiers went over there and many of them didn't come back. Why did that happen? It happened because there was an allegation made that some gunboats had attacked American ships at high sea. And the soldiers were told, go, 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 the president the authority to wage war, which including bombing North Korea and escalating the war, it was discovered that it was false. It was not true. That was a different time in a different place. I suggest that what we hear from our president and our intelligence is false and not true. We believe what they say the most false, and they could be accurate, even if they are telling us the truth. We have to assume that they are. We don't want them to wage a unilateral war in the Gulf or any place else without our allies being with us. And I 
Yo diría que en el mundo que creía que Estados Unidos se hacía tan poderoso que traía a otra gente como hormigas y pesadas donde quieren hacer lo porque están de acuerdo con sus filosofías de desacuerdo eso no va a ser misión en el mundo no va a ser nuestra misión aquí en la casa Dios no nos puso en poder para tener el poder absoluto de control y dictar sobre las vidas de otros Please, my friend, please, por favor, por favor. Miss Perry spoke so of the veterans, the homeless, and we see them every day on TV and in our community. We have 100,000 troops over there right now. Tropas and every time we send them there, they don't end up back in the military. No they come home with their illness, pleading with the veteran affairs, pleading with the Department of Veteran Affairs for help. Y caen en quejas y dicen, ven, 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 As I said the other day, I don't run from anything and I don't hide. I took my oath of office and I'm here to help. I'll put my life on the line before and I'm not a coward 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 In the Middle East, in el medio de I'm not going to support this. Soportar I will support the resolution. I'm, soportar I'm glad to join with Mr. Garcetti, Mr. Garcetti, Mr. Garcetti Galante, Galante, Perry, and others in voting high on this resolution. Not that I'm saying I'm voting against our soldiers. Not that I'm voting against our military personnel. I might be voting for their best interests. 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 En la lista, en la cola. Es en la cola. Próximo el concejal Reyes, seguido por el concejal Galante. Señor Reyes. Gracias, presidente. Yo creo que sabemos dónde estamos. Yo creo que el mensaje que estamos haciendo está diciendo que tenemos gracias de nuestras ciudades. Necesidades de nuestra juventud. No debemos de estar gastando nuestros dinero de impuestos bombardeando y matando a otra gente en otros países. Entonces no sabemos lo que estamos haciendo. Lo que estamos haciendo es que debemos priorizar cómo es que gastamos nuestros dineros en impuestos. El precio de un el camión podría cumplir todas las secundarias que tenemos en Los Ángeles. Precisamente por construir más bienes todos los centros de juventud, todos los programas, todos los programas, todos los programas de la ciudad. Es lo que estamos haciendo. Es una cuestión local y afecta a nuestro supuesto y afecta a la calidad de vida. Y eso es todo lo que estamos haciendo. Entonces esperamos que la entiendan. Que no son los que nos dejan de tratar de... All we're saying is we are echoing the sentiments of people who are hurting. Where do we begin to matter the priority of our federal dollars? That's all we're saying. Because I think we have nothing to apologize for. I moved the previous question on the entire matter. And you are the final speaker on the Q. This is the discussion. Madam Clerk, the first motion before you. There is a motion to separate the question on 15D. Any objection? Seeing none, question is separated. Madam Clerk, do you wish to take the vote then on the second? The supporting of HR 764 for the first responders' assistance. Is that clear to everybody? What exactly is before us? The entire paragraph. Entire paragraph. Off to include in the city's 2002 2003 federal legislative program. Is that clear? This is relative to advocating that the federal government make good and its commitment for resources for first responders. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Unanimous vote. 
Uh, there is council members, uh, excuse me, council member Mr. Ke excuse me, Perry's motion, and I believe that was accepted as a friendly amendment. Uh, so then it would be appropriate to vote uh, 15D as amended. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? This is the compromise resolution from Tuesday as amended by Councilor Perry today. Now before us. Yes, the Garcetti sí, Compromise Resolution, Garcetti Lebron Resolution, as amended by Councilmember Perry today. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Roll is open. All members have an opportunity to vote. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Nine eyes, four noes. Four eyes approved. Mr. President, do you wish to receive and file the rest of those matters then? Okay. Thank you, members, for members, thank you for your focus and your attention to this matter. Unless there's an objection, I believe we can receive and file the balance of the agenda item and also send the matters approved forthwith. Next item, please. Uh, next item, Mr. President, item number 13, uh, call special for cards from the public. Okay. Members of the council, members of the public, we do have additional agenda items remaining. If I can ask for your cooperation. Members of the public who are here. If I can ask for your cooperation. Of the public who are still in the room, we're going to ask for your courtesy in allowing us to proceed with the balance of our agenda. We still have other items to attend to today. Those of you wishing to remain, please do so quietly. Those of you preparing to leave council chambers, also please do so quietly and quickly, please. Before proceeding to the next item. Item number 13 was called special for cards from the public. Before we take up item 13, we do have a special guest in the audience today. And before she leaves, I want to recognize former councilwoman and assembly member Goldberg. Thank you for being with us today. Council member Hahn. We did. Okay, item 13 is now before us. We do have two cards submitted on item 13. We're just taking a brief pause until we restore order in the chambers so that we can hear from members of the public on item 13. Guards, we appreciate your help. Team. Let us call forward Mr. Larry Gross and Elisa Bennett. Mr. Gross. Council, first, thank you very much for your courageous anti-war stand. But the motion before you right now, on the other hand, greatly concerns and surprises us. We recognize that there may be landlords who have rental property that's not up to code and who don't have the financial means to bring them into compliance. Studies indicate there is upwards of 30,000 illegal garage units and granny flats in the city, which provides needed affordable housing 
to many tenants. On one hand, we can't close these units down and throw these people out on the street. On the other hand, we can't allow tenants to live in substandard and dangerous conditions. We believe that a study which seeks to find ways and maneras funding to bring these units up to code, code are more in order. We strongly oppose a study that looks to provide code-compliance hardship exemptions for seniors and low-income landlords. What message does this send? That if you are a senior or low-income landlord, it's okay to break the law and have slum housing? Sure, that's not what you want to do. Let me also point out that some of the city's largest and most notorious slumlords are senior citizens. Moreover, what about the tenants? This motion implies, in some cases, that it's okay to live in substandard and dangerous housing if your landlord happens to be a senior or, or low income. It completely flies in the face of the city's strong anti-slum stand. There should be no reason to accept tenants living in substandard housing. If this is the case, then we say to you, you must provide hardship exemptions to tenants who live in these units that they don't have to pay rent. We urge the council to deny this motion. If you must, we should be looking at ways to bring these units up to code so we can save this needed affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Ms. Alyssa Bennett. Alyssa Bennett. Thank you, members of the City Council. Uh, I support the comments of Mr. Gross, and in addition, I think we have to understand that there are two extremes being posed by this motion. The extreme of exempting people who have chosen to gain income from their properties but not invest any capital in keeping those properties into habitable condition and legal condition is not the solution. Alternatively, it's also not the solution to close down all of these units because we, we are are in an extreme affordable housing crisis. The city has tools at its disposal. Last year, the state legislature passed Assembly Bill 1866, which was charted as code, government code 655831, 65852, and 65915. This would allow the city in its housing element to set aside supplemental use areas that would allow single dwelling properties to develop a second dwelling on the property and would allow us to bring these second properties into habitable condition, would allow the city and the county to earmark funds for this purpose. I think if we are going to study this issue, let us do so. Let us do so intelligently with the welfare of the tenants in mind. Many of the districts in this city have over 65% of the residents in rental housing. It's important that we care for their welfare, for their health and safety. At at the same time, if there are those property owners that are willing to work with the city, let them do so. Let us not cut SCEP off at the knees. It is an excellent program. It has been working for the city. Let's continue to support SCEP, to support the housing department, and help everyone do their jobs for the benefit of the citizens of the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. This concludes public so comments on this item. Members wish to be heard, beginning with oh, Councilmember Assemblywoman Goldberg. I, I just put a card in. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know what the item number was. I apologize. Um, I, I would urge you to think very carefully before you start making large scale exceptions to scale. The reality is, is when we wrote this, we wrote this because of a very important problem that was happening. We were losing affordable housing stock. We were losing affordable housing stock because the percentage of slumlords that there are in housing stock that, uh, in low-income areas is higher than in other areas. It just is. They don't invest in their property. They let them go and let them go and let them go and let them go, and eventually no one has the money to tear them down, to, to fix them up so they get torn down and we lose the housing stock altogether. Now, if there is squeaking that needs to be done, Fine, figure out how to help those people who need help who are not slumlords. That would be an adjustment you could make. But when you start making wholesale exemptions, you end up exempting some of the worst players in the name of helping the few that might have been caught in the net. Uh, I'm not saying that once you pass an ordinance, you should 
never revisit it. Of course you do. You look at the experience and you revisit it. But these large, huge, vast exemptions will only exacerbate the problem by making folks who are not struggling to keep their unit and two or three others that they live in together. That and if you want to, go look at those and see if we can provide through our loan systems, through the housing department, some assistance for them to bring it up to code. We don't want them not to live in up to code buildings either. If they can't afford it, we need to help them find a way to get funding to afford it. But when you throw the baby out with the bathwater, you can't go back. It's very hard to go back. And once you do that, you provide then opportunities for the scurrilous scum dogs that own slum buildings to come and use seniors as fronts and say, ah, this is a senior that really owns this building or someone else like that, and what you're going to end up with are the kinds of things that we saw when the building fell down in Echo Park uh, a couple of years ago at Christmas time. One of the low-income tenants was listed as the owner of the building. And of course he didn't own the building, he didn't even know he had been listed there. You begin to open the system up to gaming by large, vast opportunities of large exemptions. So if there are problems with people having trouble because they're small and they're in areas where they don't have a lot of income and it's hard to get loans, address that problem. But don't provide a huge opening for people to scam the system and to provide, without really realizing it, protection for the people who are really causing the problem, which are these slumlords that do not want to keep their property up, drain every life dollar out of it, and then say, oh my God, oh, it's in such terrible shape, we can't afford to fix it up, no one will loan us on this building. And then they toss the keys at the bank, and the housing gets torn down, and we lose affordable housing, so I implore you, Look at this to fix the specific problem that needs to be addressed. Don't make vast swaths of exceptions because the bad guys know how to utilize every exception you give them to say, well, that's fine. Now we'll go find some seniors and we'll put the name of everybody, who, every slum building in the, in, the, in the city in the name of some senior citizen, and then we're, then we're exempt. Uh, so please don't do this today. Look at it again. Thank you. We've had another card submitted on item 13, Rod Field. Please come forward. Yes, my name is Rod Field. I'm with the LA Housing Law Project, and everything Jackie just said, uh, I repeat. But I did, in preparing for this, I did public files, public files from the Housing Department to look at what some of the senior problems, the senior owners had as problems. In almost every one of these cases, they involved health and safety issues, serious safety issues especially, defective wiring, exposed wiring, lack of smoke detectors. Now, if we want to address these problems, we want to address Mr. Pacheco's issue, that's fine. But we can't be sending the wrong signal to the housing department and say, well, if you see somebody without a smoke detector, that's okay. If you see exposed wiring, that's okay. Uh, the tragedy last night should be a reminder to all of us how quickly something can go wrong in a building and what tragedy can follow. So I, I urge you not to send the wrong signal to the department. If we want to look at this problem, that's fine. I just want to give you one quote out of the housing, this council's housing task force report. And it was the problem of the program, the SEP program is so effective, 96% of the properties comply once they're cited and owners understand this. Severe penalties can be leveled for non-compliance. It's 96% rate. I, I, want, I don't want to see that fall 1% less of compliance. Thank you. Thank you. And another speaker card just submitted, Ms. Chancella Almanzur. Um, Chancellor Al-Mansour, I'm a supervising attorney of Neighborhood Legal Services, but I'm not speaking on the behalf of Neighborhood Legal Services because I'm on leave and speaking on behalf as a homeowner. I live um, in Nick Pacheco's district, and I'm against this. I, I, uh, firmly believe that if an owner cannot afford to make repairs and be in the business of, ma of renting, then they should not do that. Uh, it's a slippery slope. Once we go down this path, then owners will start to present every other reason that they can. It would be very, very hard to 
um, not only to implement this, but to actually supervise this and make sure that the owners aren't coming up with bogus reasons for their hardship. So, and I don't see how we can afford to um, look over this, this program and make sure that owners are actually suffering a hardship. There are probably other ways, as, as I completely agree with, um, with Ms. Goldberg, that we should look at other ways in which we can uh, help owners if they are truly suffering a hardship. And then, once again, I'm against this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. This concludes public comment on this item. Before beginning with council discussion, uh, I've been alerted by the guards that there is a briefcase in the third row here on the left-hand side of the audience, right side from the point of view of the council members. If that belongs to somebody still with us, uh, please claim it so our guards don't get too nervous. We're also going to make an announcement to uh, the public gathered outside of council chambers. Let's proceed with council discussion. The chair recognizes council member Garcetti. Is Mr. Garcetti here? Okay, let's proceed then to council member Gruel. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I want to agree wholeheartedly with Council Member, well, Assembly Member Goldberg and her comments and the rest of the individuals. I seconded Mr. Pacheco's motion because I wanted to see if there were things we could tweak it, and this will not wholeheartedly throw it out because I think your leadership, Jackie, on this issue, particularly because we have seen so many apartment units and buildings that have um, been atrocious um, and that we need to improve upon it. So I don't disagree actually with any of the comments that have been made today. The the idea, my idea, thought was, and I, I Mr. Um, Pacheco can maybe add to this, was the idea of where there are some hardship exemptions, if in fact we could have loan programs, assistance, those kinds of things so that we not immediately throw them out but help them. And so that was my intent of agreeing to this motion. And this is going to come back, a report back, and I would encourage, and maybe this can be a friendly amendment, asking the Housing Department to work with the advocates that are present today who have participated in a number of our issues recently at the table to um, have the discussion. And I I see Sally Richmond from the Housing Department shaking her head that that will be fine to have a working group that would include the advocates present today and any others. And if someone from your office as well, uh, Assembly Member, would like to participate, um, we would add that as well um, to do that. So I think, great, I appreciate that. So I just wanted to clarify my intent of this because I wholeheartedly support the SCEP program and that the idea was can we make it better and can we help those individuals who, in fact, may be owners who don't have the resources to improve it, help them them improve those na those particular buildings. Um, so that was my intent, um, and I'm hoping that's the same as Mr. Pacheco since I seconded his motion on that item. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Council President. What I want to appreciate and thank Senator Mary Goldberg for being so articulate on the issues. Uh, I can share with you, though, colleagues, that our need to be more focused on how we're dealing with how people are being treated, I think it's reaching a, a different level. level. And I say this because in the southern part of my district, I've had tenants come forward and show me how there are management companies who are working with more wealthier individuals who have the ability to put together capital and are systematically moving people out through harassment. They are moving people out by neglect, as has been described, and they're renting to different populations, like students who can afford higher incomes. Now, the question becomes very clear to us is, how are we going to focus on this? So I'm hoping this kind of attention is being given. We go back and reassess this ordinance, because we have that kind of threat occurring to these tenants today. So I just want to make sure that this is put on record, that we have an understanding that there are some very vulnerable people that are being, quite frankly, attacked, and they're being displaced in a very, very uh, ruthless manner and the most vulnerable. So we want to make sure that we approach this issue in a manner that lets the city attorney give us an understanding of what vehicles, what tools are available to us. I hope the advocates can continue working with us so that we can start organizing in such a way where we can hold these kinds of practices in check. Thank you. 
Mr. Pacheco. Mr. President, colleagues, um, this is a very simple motion. Uh, we have some seniors in the Rojas community who feel that the housing department is systematically uh, going after them. They have invoked the memories of the problems that they've had with uh, Chavez Ravine and the city of Los Angeles eminent domaining their property. Uh, whether this is from a lack of information or education, uh, the bottom line is that the burden is not on them, uh, the burden on is on us to appropriately inform them and educate them. We have many good programs. SCEP is a good program, but I believe uh, that when you have people who you represent, uh, who feel that they're being singled out and targeted, that you have an obligation to explore their concerns, review them all, and make sure that they're not ignored uh, by the administration. This motion simply gives uh, my community seniors and residents an opportunity to be heard. It goes to committee. We had anticipated uh, that they would be present, but they are not. But I think at the same time, uh, I have seen a couple of things happening, uh, specifically on the east side, that I find troublesome. Uh, the most troublesome thing that I've seen and been reported in the Alliance recently is that we advocate uh, for affordable housing from the top, and we advocate for more affordable housing units uh, to be built, especially in our uh, communities where we know that there are many families with uh, limited incomes or who have jobs that don't pay enough to uh, really uh, have uh, a good chunk, with a good chunk of their pay is being used for rent. But then when we go actually to go and support a group like the East LA Community Corporation, we have residents, uh, like was reported a couple of days, days ago in the LA Times, who completely opposed uh, affordable housing, multi-family units. And then I have opponents who jump on that bandwagon because they think it's politically expedient. Uh, to uh, come out against an affordable housing project uh, because there's some nimbyism going on in the community. So at some point, uh, we have to deal with this in a more global sense. Uh, I've already shared with the Councilmember Rule's office that I think we've done an inactive job of informing, especially our low-income residents on the east side, the value of affordable housing and how we do it differently now than in the 30s and 40s because their images of affordable housing are outdated, they're antiquated, uh, and in some cases, they're even uh, very uh, prejudicial uh, towards uh, tenants and renters. So uh, I'm going to look at the affordable housing trust fund. There's a 10% uh, the miscellaneous fund and see if we can do a global education campaign to this motion is in response to many seniors who came out to the Fall High Senior Center a couple of weeks ago. Uh, their request, uh, which I told them is unrealistic, but their request was for the complete elimination of SCAP. Uh, they know that that's unrealistic, but I did promise them that we would have a conversation, and I believe that that's what the motion is, is for seniors uh, in the neighborhood. So I would just simply ask the support, or go to the committee, and we can discuss this with our seniors in the committee. Ms. Mikowska. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to bring up just another issue that uh, has been brought to my attention about the scam that I think I'd just like to add that as we're asking for a report back, we also ask the Housing Department to work with the Planning Department in at least the Venice community in my district, as the Housing Department has gone through, they may find a small apartment building or a small uh, dwelling triplex or triplex uh, in the city of San Francisco or 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 in the city of San Francisco viable, uh, lower income available units that as the Housing Department goes through under the SCEP program is say eliminate that unit, eliminate that possibility of uh, housing capability for, uh, that is affordable in the community and they may have been there for now 15, 20 years. And as SCEP is going through is saying get rid of these units, I would like the Planning Department along with that to look at the possibility where some of these units are decent housing, are affordable, and they may have been there 
están vivibles y que dejemos de llevar para a date that we're certain to be in So do I see a motion for reconsideration by the 14, which has been continued? Mr. Zion moves without objection. Item 14 is reconsidered and continued to March 14th. Coming back to item number 16, Chair recognizes the Council Member Holden. Uh, Mr. President, members, I'd like to offer an amendment to the motion which address the issue of uh, reinstating the draft, military draft to require military or national service for men and women aged 18 to 26 without exemptions for college and graduate studies. On today's council agenda will be amended to include the city's position on that matter. Now we hope that that legislation can be amended to provide to seek amendments which would permit any civilian national service requirements to be satisfied by service in the Department of Homeland Security, Peace Corps, VISTA, which we're all aware of, and any other similar national service efforts in the National Guard. What we're saying, Mr. President, members, is that uh, we should not just point to one group of people who are desperate, unemployed, need to find a place to settle down to go off to war. As we know, in the Vietnam, we had about 40% of the front line soldiers came from the city and primarily African Americans at that time. Now, we're not saying that we supported the war. In fact, today, we took a pretty good vote on it saying we should not have a no unilateral effort in the Gulf. But I would say to you that there are too many 
mucho especialmente y en nuestras calles sin tener nada que hacer y estar envueltos en crímenes y actividades en bandillas, etc. Cuando había un otro vista no tenemos esa clase de problemas aquí en la comunidad de los Cárceles y eso sería el final. Podemos, podemos, no podemos poder el tema, el tema de la continuar su comportamiento malo en las comunidades en vez de ser una amenaza. El presidente y miembros no veo su comportamiento en este asunto. Conocemos el asunto anterior a eso. Y nuestros colegas conocen que están oyendo que tenemos la autoridad del veterano y también la legión americana vamos a tomar una presión en esta cuestión. Y si ese es el caso, me presento a miembros que yo voy a detener esta causa hasta tengamos una posición tomada por la Organización Nacional de la UFW y la legión americana en esta cuestión como es la generación proceda. Yo creo que es apropiado su gestión de que esa legislación sea amendada si debe ser exitosa. Es apropiado que la legislación sea propuesta por el Congreso de Cambio que incluya provisiones que permitan al presidente dejar other types of services other than individuals going into the office. And I'd like to just add an amendment to something that we can vote on. If that legislation is going to go forward, then of course, we want to go forward with full knowledge that the individuals who are being selected later on can serve in that capacity. I might also add that I talked to the general, Mark Carrion, and he was in charge of selected services for the state of California. He was in charge of selected services for the state of California. And I'm learning that we only have 70% compliance. We're people talking like they're patriotic. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting the United States of America. They talk like they believe in supporting Vista, Vista, the Peace Corps, even the National Guard, and any other national service that would satisfy those conditions imposed by the grant. That's a verbal amendment. Brother who is mother who is. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Ahora tenemos una cosa que el señor Holden soporte para adelante y luego estamos haciendo la otra. Te regreso al comité. Entonces tenemos la resolución de Holden diciendo que debe que ser referida al comité, pero vamos a ver para que el señor Holden se hace. Is there any questions? No preguntas. Then, without objection, let's send the original resolution back. And Mr. Holden, if you want to restate the man you wish for us to vote on today, the other motion goes back to the committee for the verbal amendment, and it's also been distributed in writing. It begs yes, but it should be simply means that if that legislation by Congress should go forward, it should be amended to include the option of service that would allow individuals who fit those categories to serve in the Homeland Security Program, to serve in the VISTA Program, to serve in the Peace Corps Program as an alternative to going into the military. Seeing other speakers, that's correct. Information. That's going back to the committee. We're not voting on whether we agree with that or not today. You're just amending it. The original resolution is being referred back to the committee. The motion, Mr. Holden, is just saying that the motion is being referred back to the committee. The motion, Mr. Holden, is just saying that the motion is being referred back to the committee. Amendment or amendment to motion that has been distributed and he has asked for a vote on that today. We're about to vote on it. We're about to vote on it. We're about to vote on it. Okay. Not on the original resolution. The original motion has been distributed in writing. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. I just okay. haven't seen it. Then I mean, the may need to ask you to ask for staff 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 to ask for sta
Ms. Sikowski has the floor. I would like to just uh, clarify for the 16A, and it basically the, so the general indications whether or not the city should support or not support the legislation is going back to committee, but what we would act on today is that if we support it and if it goes forward in, in Congress, that, that it would include the possibility that any other kind of national citizen service uh, would satisfy uh, that kind of service. Peace Corps Vista, the kinds of things that, that anyone and everyone in many other countries do have a requirement. So it's basically saying that if this to be approved, it should be broad, including all these things, and then the entire action to whether or not the city is going to support that action is going back to the community. And can I just, just say, if that's a formal motion, I can't second it. Because I think it's important to see that in the Sixth Amendment. Thank you. It is the motion that Mr. Holden made. Thank you. All right, so it's going back to the community. Thank you. 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 I don't agree with the content of this motion. If all we're voting on is that this should be going back to committee, that's a different thing. We're voting on the content of it. Okay, folks, now that we're all paying attention, there's an original Holden resolution that appeared on today's agenda. That is the Holden request to send back to committee. In addition, there's an amending motion that was introduced a few minutes ago. It has been circulated. It was just read aloud. That, Mr. Holden, is asking for a vote because there may be relative or or related legislation being voted upon in Congress that this could apply to, not just whether or not the council comes back with the provisions that the original resolution would call for. Mr. President, members, I think for clarity, this comes with a substitute motion, so it's in lieu of the original motion, which is going to committee. This could be a substitute motion, which would amend any legislation that would address that issue in Congress. Mr. President, my what, I, what I would do now that I understand that, and I appreciate your forbearance, is move to send the entire matter to committee uh, so the entire matter can be addressed by your committee, Mr. President. That's my motion. I have a second. Thank you. Okay, members, we also have 10 members present at this time in their quorum. So let's stay focused here. This is the last item for us today. Madam Clerk, we have now, instead of an amending motion, a substitute motion. We also have a motion to refer the entire matter back to committee. Well, there was a, I didn't hear a second on Mr. Weiss's motion to send to send the entire back. So that seconds. should be the first uh, vote to send the entire matter back to the committee. Okay. Members, 10 members, members present. We need eight to send this matter back to the committee. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. On the motion to refer the entire matter back to the committee, we have eight members present. On the motion to refer the matter back to the committee, please close the roll and calculate the vote. Seven eyes, three noes. Okay, the matter does not pass. No pass. So now we have Ahora the amending motion the still before us. Yeah, yeah, we can the motion. Mr. City Attorney, right here, right now, this issue here is called to go back to committee, correct? Is that what we have right there? We just voted. Has it been in committee at all? The original Holden resolution was agendized in committee. Back to the committee the way it came out, but the motion was, hey, it doesn't matter to me if you want your kids to go to war. I mean, I've been there, done that. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying <laughs> to you, you should give them alternative <laughs> service if it's going to fly, <laughs> then you include it right <laughs> now, then. Yes. Mr. Zayn. Mr. Zayn. Hey, Mr. President, this issue obviously deserves a public debate, and I think the, uh, the public would be willing to come and uh, have us listen to them, whether it be in committee or here in council. So I would support that it goes to committee and it be publicized, and it seems like it's kind of under the radar scope right now as we see the audience is uh, dwindled to just a few people. And I think this would be a, a, a subject that a lot of people, including neighborhood councils and Janice on, would want to on. So I think the whole package needs to go back to committee for a public hearing and get public input on this very important matter before us and not just slide it off. Okay. Uh, before I Mr. Zayn. Mr. Zayn. 
Okay, you made reference to this being under the radar. We had five people here in the audience today who were very passionate and concerned about a related matter. And it's still here on today's agenda. It would seem to me that people who were interested in the issue as a whole might have stuck around. And Mr. President, I think the people were listening to one issue and maybe it was on the agenda, but I don't think it was noted to them, or I think they would still be here voicing their concerns about this matter. Mr. Holden, I don't know what we've seen. Father, receive receive father, get rid of it. Receive father, get rid of it. You don't even know what you're marking. Because you, you got your mind locked. So receive father. And when he's drafted, he drafted everybody equally. The motion is not to receive father. Please close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Forthwith. Next ayes. This is the time for comments from the public on items not on council's agenda. Council, forward, I believe it's Guillermo Herman. 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 If he's no longer here, si no aquí, the public comment period for today's meeting is closed. Madam Clerk, accept this. Council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. There are excuses on the desk. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to arrive at a 11 o'clock meeting. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Friday, June 6th to uh, Council Member Perry requested to excuse Tuesday, February 25th to leave at 1045 for city business. The motion is required. Uh, Ms. Gruel moves. Ms. Perry is excused. And that clears the desk, Mr. President. Okay. Okay. Members, are there any announcements today? Are there any announcements today? Seeing no announcements, do we have adjourning motions today? Please rise for adjourning motions. Please rise for adjourning motions. Reed Western Theological Seminary and the Bishop of Dallas, Texas. While serving at Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church, he was given the opportunity to be ordained by the Book of Laws of the Baptist Association at the request of Dr. B.W. Wade. On August 1962, he received his license of ordination and was introduced and presented as the new pastor of the first Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church, which was located in South Central at the time. On February 25, 1968, he had a groundbreaking for a new church in the city of Compton, and on December 20th, 1970, he and his members marched into the newly built church where it remains today. Dr. P.J. Jones was a very active citizen and served on many boards and associations, among them the operational manager of the Police Clergy Council for the Los Angeles Police Department. He was a board member of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, the Compton Mayor's Advisory Board, Attorney General Advisory Council, a licensed attorney general and 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 a at the Praises of Zion Missionary Baptist Church, um, and it will have Dr. Joby Hardwick, Joby Hardwick. Uh, uh, officiating, Officiant. and that's at 8222 South San Pedro Street in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Dr. P.J. Jones was a friend Jones of the Hahn family, as family as long as I can gente, remember, uh, and uh, advised my father uh, uh, to the very end of my father's life, and certainly has been a friend of my brother's and I, and supported us in whatever uh, we've ever wanted to do, he will be missed. Uh, by the entire community of Los Angeles, uh, 
California and California. Uh, other states y otros the well. del país también. Thank you. Mr. Holt. Mr. Holt. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. members, I'd like to join Ms. Hans in a journey in memory of a great, loyal American, American. Dr. P.J. Jones. Dr. P.J. Jones. Uh, P.J. Jones, Dr. Dr. Jones, was also the president of the Baptist Ministers' Conference. And every single minister in this region and nationally knew Dr. Jones and his work. He was a head of a 33rd degree Mason, Scottish Rite, Grand Master. He knew how to treat people, for he was trained in the Brotherhood, just how to do that, and that's the life he lived. Uh, he will be missed. As Janet said, he was a good friend to the Hong family, family, as long as she could remember. But I remember before remember you could remember, Janet, that he was such a friend. And any time the supervisor needed any help or support, Dr. Jones Dr. was there and vice versa. When the community needed support and Dr. Jones was requesting it, the supervisor was there. That's the kind of relationship, relationship they had at the time. time. And I want to tell you that he's a great man. He's a great man. He's a great man. And you're going to be missed by all. Uh, I'd like to also join the memory of a young woman, Mercy Underwood, passed away February 15th. Mercy Underwood was 90 years of age at the time of passing. Originally from Rock Spring, Wyoming. She's lived in the 10th district since 1962. Mercy Underwood was a retired seamstress. Worked with her hands so well. And traveled extensively with her husband after she stopped working with Mercy. She has suffered from a number of illnesses and recently passed away. She survived by her husband for more than 50 years, Frank Underwood, and one son, Michael Underwood, and a number of friends and relatives. President members, we enjoy them both for these very, very fine people. Other tributes? Ms. Mikowski. Members, I would like to have the council adjourn in the memory of Joseph Ham, who is the father of Roger Ham, the head of the Los Angeles Police Department and the Information Technology Division. Uh, Joseph Ham, Roger's father, passed away yesterday after complications from a major heart attack. He was 81 years old, and previously he'd been in good health. So I think all members of the Department would extend that to the Roger Ham. Other tributes? Other tributes? Other tributes? Other tributes? Other tributes? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Secretary, por favor, llévese la lista. Esto ya se terminó. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned.